Good morning, happy faces. Brandon, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> okay, let's all stand up for the Word of God today. The sermon title is <coughs> Defiling, <coughs> Defiling the Vessel of God. It's allergies, not coronavirus, so don't worry about it. <coughs> We're going to read, uh, it's part of the scripture we read last week, okay? So we're going to read from Daniel, chapter 5, verses 17 through 23. Okay, let's all start together. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king, and make known to him an interpretation. O King, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he killed, and whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up, and whom he would, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened, so that he felt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne, and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind, and his mind was like that of a beast, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, and the vessels of his house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the God of silver and gold and bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hand is your breath and who are our ways. You have not honored. Amen. Let's sit down. So last week, we read this exact passage, except last week we read the entire chapter, okay? So, just to recap, this Daniel chapter 5, it starts off with the king. King throws a big, huge party. Over a thousand people show up. And he's getting drunk. He's having fun. And he says, you know what? Bring out those vessels. Bring out those vessels we took from Israel. Give it to everybody. Let's all drink from them and get drunk and let's praise our God, our God of stone, rock, gold, silver, bronze, metal. And then what happened? Finger appeared, hand appeared, and the finger of, of, of a human being started writing on the wall. And the king was scared and said, okay, somebody needs to interpret that for me. Nobody was there. And the queen said, you know what? There is a person who can interpret that for you. His name is Daniel. <laughs> so Daniel was brought in. Now last week, we talked about before Daniel interpreted the hand handwriting, he convicted the king. How many remember the title from last week's sermon? Okay. Rebecca, you want to hear it with us? Yeah. What he said was, you know, King, you knew all these things. You knew about your father. You knew how God humbled him. You knew all of this. Today's message is also on the same passage. So even though he knew all this, what is the sin that he committed? I want to focus on the very cause, 
that made the hand of God appear and judge him. Okay? So, we read this in verse 24. We, we also read it in verse 2 through 5. So basically, they brought out these golden vessels that was taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And everybody drank from them and they praised their own God. And the hand appeared. So, why was drinking from these vessels wrong? Anybody? Why was drinking from these vessels wrong? Why did it cause God to be angry? Anybody? It's a simple question, right? I know you all know the answer, but you're just too shy. What was the significance of these vessels? It was used where? Whisper somebody. Where, where were these vessels used? Yeah, the temple of God. So what was it used for? To worship God. These vessels were taken from the temple of God, they were made to be used for God, for worshiping God. King has taken what was dedicated to God and used it for himself. King took what was, what belonged to God and used it for himself. He's actually basically saying, hey, I am God. This was made for God, and he drank from it. And he did whatever he wished with it. Basically, he declared himself God. He took the vessel dedicated to praise and honor and worship God. And he used it to praise what seemed like gods of gold and silver. But basically, he was praising himself in front of the thousand people saying, look how great I am. These vessels who belong to God, the God that my father honored, I'm using this thing. He was praising himself above the true God. Now there's a term we use when people do things like this. And the term is sacrilege. Have you ever, how many of you heard of this term? Sacrilege. This is sacrilege. So, this sacrilege, what does it mean? Sacred ligre, which means sacred to steal. Basically, he stole what belonged to God. That's sacrilege. What belongs to God, I stole it. Let me ask all of you a question. Could it be that you are also committing sacrilege in your life. Could it be that you guys are stealing something that belongs to God? Could it be that you are taking the things of God as using it for your own self? Are any of you aware of any vessels of God in your life right now? In your present day? Anybody? David, do you know if there's a vessel of God that you know of in your life right now? No? Isaac? Vessel of God, meant to worship God. The Bible, okay. What else? Anybody else? You are the vessels of God. You. Yourself, you are the vessel of God. The Bible tells you that you are the temple of God. Why? 
Because who resides in the temple? Who resides in the temple? Anybody? Who resides in the temple? God. That's why it's called Temple of God. That's why it's a temple. If it's a big place and they have a basketball court, it's not a temple of God. It's a basketball auditorium, right? It's a temple of God because God resides in that place. Thus, temple of God. Well, the Bible tells us that you are the temple of God. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Because God lives in you. God is in your body, in your heart, in your spirit. God is present in you. That's what it means to be a Christian. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and you said, Lord, I'm going to commit my life to you. What does that mean? I'm going to commit my life to you. I'm going to say, my body, I'm going to turn into your temple. I'm going to use myself to worship you. You come into my life. You occupy me. You reside in me, in my heart. And use me for your glory. That's what it means to be a Christian. When you dedicated your life to serving and worshiping God, you became the vessel of God. You became God's belonging, God's property. Understand? Do you understand? Yeah. You are the present day vessel of God. So now, if you take your body and you use it for your own pleasure, for your own purpose, for your own glory, you are